Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy. Sharing with you today a fall apple cutie pie card featuring some apple coloring with a bunch of different Lawn Fawn stamps to create my whole card. This one is a card process video. I did leave in this coloring a little bit slower. So this is in times two, so it's twice speed for this first part here. I had colored these apples actually last fall and I saved the footage. I know, I found it, I was amazed. But I had done these last fall and had planned on making a card and I never got around to it. And so when I pulled out some images to create with this last week, I was like, oh, I really need to do my apple card that I wanted to do last year. And so I pulled out this one again. And so I wanted to get, when I colored these, I wanted to get that fresh off of the apple tree in at the farm look and they're I want to say they're Harrelson's it's a winter apple and it's what we use to make apple pie it's more of a sour apple crisp tart and so they don't have that solid color and I wanted to convey that in the coloring and so I did a lot more flicking and less blending so kind of just bringing in the darkest ones first and then coming in with some darker greens, some lighter greens to add some highlights, and then of course a lighter red overall to kind of add that red highlight to the top of the apple. So I'm going to speed it up here so you don't have to watch me color super slow because, you know, it probably took me, I think video footage of that one was like nine minutes just to color the basket of apples. Nine? No, it was nine for the one probably, so it was probably, you know, 15 minutes of coloring. I wasn't going to make you sit through all of that. So I'm just doing the same thing I did with these. I wasn't so worried about having any white on it. It was just a matter of making it kind of that streaky look. And so for the basket, I'm just going to come in with a darker tone, lay in some dark tones, some light, and then go back over it with the light tones using two ink colors, blending them as I go. And then, of course, bringing in just a darker green for the leaf. And then I have all of my images colored and cut out. So I did end up coloring some other ones with the ones that I had done last fall. So the ones that I did last fall were the little mouse with the apron and then the apple basket. And then I did bring in the Simply Fall apples. And I cut them using my brother's scan and cut. So it actually cuts them apart. But it would be easy to cut them apart with the die cut as the die as well, just rounding out the corners a little bit to get bunches of apples or individual and bunched apples from the Simply Fall set. So for my background, I couldn't decide on a paper, so I thought, well, well let's make one. So I'm bringing in that, I think it's the Simply or the Plaid Builder set from Lawn Fawn. So it's two stencils, the thick one and then the thin skinny one. And so I'm starting with that thick one and then I'm going to move over to the skinny one. So for my thick one I brought in the tea dye distressing and then for my skinny one I'm going to bring in the I think this one was lumberjack plaid for my ink color on my stripes. I wanted it to go and coordinate with my images that I was using but I didn't want it to be too overpowering. Plus I needed it to look kind of like wallpaper. So that was kind of my theory on this one when I decided to do it this way. I am ink blending on some Uhuhu marker paper there. And then I'm going to reuse my mask for the bottom part. And so I want to have like a marble countertop. I, well, I really wanted a wood countertop, but butcher block, but I don't have a wood stencil. So I ended up using this swirly, swirly one from Tim Holtz. It's one of those that come in like the combo kit from Joanne. So it's a, a mixed media style stencil. And I just selectively inked it over those little swirlies. I think it's like lines or scribbles or something like that. It ended up super light because I used blush shadow, but I like the look. It reminded me of Grandma Leona's kitchen countertops, but her little swirls were bright colors like teals and pinks, I believe. It's been a few years. 
So I'm bringing in all of my images, kind of figuring out layout, what I have for real estate there, how far up I need to put things to make them all fit. I want some things hanging off the side to show that it, it's continuing on, you know, past the scene that is on the card. Also reminding myself I need to leave a little bit of real estate for the sentiment. So laying out all the things, of course, I'm going to bring in my scissors, not my scissors, my X-Acto knife cutter here to cut a slit in the top of the bowl to give my spoon a place to tuck into. And then of course, figuring out how far up it needs to be so my mouse can kind of still hold on to the spoon. So once I am kind of happy with how I have everything placed, I'm gonna start gluing things down and figuring out what I want popped up, what I want flat. And I tried to keep this one fairly flat today instead of adding all of the dimension. Easier to mail, I know. So. The card itself kind of came about because it reminds, the countertop reminds me of Grandma Leona's, but so does the apples and the pie bit game. So we used to, when I was little, we would go over to Grandma Leona's apple season and we would do like 80 apple pies. You know, we would just start and she could always peel the apple with a knife. It was, it always amazed me. It still amazes me. She'd go all the way around the apple like you do with an apple peeler, but she would do it with a paring knife. And she'd get just the, you know, the thinnest slice of skin all the way off. And it, most of the time she could do the whole thing in one pass. No breaks in the apple skin. As a child, it amazed me. As an adult, it amazes me even more. So I'm going to pop up my little mouse on the butter stick here. I kind of thought about bringing in a stool for it to stand on. And I just decided that, you know, that butter stick was like the perfect height and I needed it in my scene anyways. So it kind of had dual purpose there. I didn't need it in my scene, but I wanted it in my scene. So I'm bringing in the rolling pin. And I'm going to let that one sit off the side of the page. So my second layer, so my first layer, which was the apple basket and the flower and the apples, is glued flat down. And then everything that came in after that, I decided to pop up. Just because once I popped up the mouse and the bowl, I decided I needed to pop up everything else. Just because how it sits on the counter on your cards, it would be closer to you so it's popped up. I would have probably, you know liked to do two layers or a thicker layer of foam tape behind the stuff that was in front but I decided to keep it thinner like I said so it's easier to ship. Now I did try popping up the flower little puddle here and I was like no it just didn't look right so I did end up taking off the foam and gluing it down later on. I don't think I showed, I don't remember if I showed that one on camera or not. Oh, here it is. See, I knew I did it. I think it was because when I did the apple, I was like, no, it just didn't look right. And so, because it was behind the apple, but then the apple was in front of it. And so it ended up going down flat as well. And then bringing some of that red down from the apples, bringing those apples in front of the bowl kind of helps to even out the red or pull that red back down to the bottom part. I have three green elements of the pie plate, the bowl, and the flower. It's not in a great triangle, but it's in an okay triangle. I guess I could have put the flower on the other side of the apples, but I liked the height on the other. So I'm going to snip off all of the things onto the side here. And figure out my sentiment. So I knew where the sentiment was going. And I kind of had an idea, but I wasn't positive. And of course, when I push record, it didn't record. So you get the end of me making my custom paper for my die cut letters here. I kind of brought in similar marker colors. Remember, I colored the other ones last year. I have no clue what colors I used. But I brought in 
some of the ones that I was pretty certain were close to the colors I had used. And then brought in Henry's ABCs and just cut out the word pie from it. I wanted it to stand out on the background and I didn't know if I wanted it to be a solid color so I decided it should match my apples. So let's die cut that and then bring that in as well as using that high cutie pie stamp from the cutie pie stamp set. That's where the pie comes from down below. I'm using the baked with love for the flour, the bowl, I think the spoon and the butter and then the a creature was stirring for the little mouse in the apron and then of course I already said I was using the thanks a bushel stamp set for my bushel basket of apples and then the simply celebrate fall for the individual and sets of two apples on my card so I was I looked at doing it just directly on the background and I felt like my pie was getting lost in the plaid and so I decided to bring in a simply celebrate or simply is it simply celebrate banner no it's a sentiment banner everyday banners I don't remember but it's one of the bigger ones it doesn't fit the letters totally on there but it gives them enough of a backing that I think it pops them off the page a little bit more or off the card front, I guess. It's not, you know what I mean. So I will put them on there. I did stamp my high cutie, selectively inking it with Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And once I am happy with that, I will bring that in and glue that on. Just leaving it flat onto my card front here. And then I trim off the overhang there. And then add my panel here onto a piece of coordinating colored cardstock. So my cardstock here is from close to my heart. I want to say it is the olive color cardstock. And then I will bring in some sickles in frosted sugar, ice sugar, sugar crystals. To add some sugar to my pie and of course to my bowl and then some sparkles to my flower there as well as a little bit of glitter onto my cutie pie dots above. You know, they're open. They need something on them. So that is my completed card for today. I hope you have an amazing rest of the day. Keep getting inky. Bye!